is obviously when you was at college last time, first four weeks, we went through making basic plain stamp and basic concave shoes. So what we're going to do is a bit of a refresher tonight. We're just going to go through the basic process of making a plain stamp front and a concave hind at the same time. Okay, moving on, you know you should all, you should all be competent now of being able to make uh, two shoes in the fire at once, be it coke or on the gas forge. Okay, so just going to quickly go through the measuring process and the marking process. Obviously, first thing we need to do is determine what's going to be our outside hill, which that one is. Obviously, this is going to be a front shoe. Uh, it's 13 and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm going to mark a um, 16th off centre. Again, I know it's obviously 13. You know, for the toe setting, for the toe nail, obviously a uh, 13 inch shoe is going to be uh, inch and three quarters. We're going to move this one click, which is one extra sixteenth, which should give us the right measurement for our front shoe, for our toenails. Okay, another quick trick you can do is just get another set of dividers, set for halfway across the steel. Or just, just uh, not quite halfway, and that will give us a nice uniform measurement. Okay, remember we're going to have to put the pitch on these nail holes, so it wants to be just slightly to the outside. Okay, so that's shoe number one. Obviously a flat shoe is going to take more heat and we've got to jump the toe. Okay, so now the concave shoe. Same again, mark, mark the outside heel first. We've got 13 and a quarter inches here again. Okay, now because it's a hind shoe, we're going to mark it one eighth off centre. So it's a little bit more off centre. Obviously, start point for our measurement, inch and a half, that's 12 for a 12 and three quarter inch shoe. Again, so we've got two more quarter inches, so an extra half inch on that, so that's two clicks on the, on the ruler with our dividers. Again, mark it down in the concave. Okay, so our nail holes are all set up. We've got our off centre centre dot, we've got our, our toenails marked, we've got our outside heel marked. Remember guys watching this, if you've got any questions, just comment as we go, and I'll try and answer them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump the toe on the flat shoe. Okay, the best way is we want to split that into thirds, okay? So the middle third is where we want hot, a bit longer than our nail hole distance, so we've got a nice blended thick toe. We want to go from anything from, depends on the size shoe, but we want to be putting between quarter and half an inch into the toe. I tend to go just over quarter, or around about. Everybody wants it to be a good heat, wants to be a good yellow heat, and it wants to be uniform. Nice and even. Okay, so I'm going to cool it out. Third. Up and down, we'll three hit roll. One, two, three, good hits. Level it. As soon as it starts to bend, it will just twist and we'll lose our efficiency. The trick is to get as much material into the shoe as quickly as possible. Drive the steel down into the ambit. 
So as you can see now, we've got a definite thickening from just that side of the dot and this side of the dot, so the middle third, okay? So then, obviously that goes into the safe zone of fire, the junction between the red and the black, and we now stick our toe bend, the concave shoe, and fire. Shouldn't take too long to get to the correct temperature. So remember with the toe bends, this is for a, a quarter clip behind shoe. So we're going to hit halfway between the centre dot and the toenail dot to give us the correct toe bend radius. Once we've got that in, obviously mark our, mark our toenails so you can see it clearly. Remember your pitch. Okay, and then obviously remember to lock the toe off. So it's a definite start finish. Okay, definite start and finish of the toe bend where the nail holes go. Again, remember it's concave hind, so we're just going to push that concave border over. So it's only 3.8. So it's a toe congestion. Ooh. And lastly, we just check our toe bend, make sure it's where we want it, because by closing up, we may have altered it. Just lightly. Check the toe. So it's got to be the right radius. Start and finish is at the toe now. Okay. And remember, if we want to check to make sure that we're even, line that up on the side of the anvil, draw a line. Okay, flip the shoe, line that up on the side of the anvil. Is it in line? Yeah, so that must be symmetrical. Okay, so again, swap the shoes over. Obviously, we put the concave shoe from the junction between the black and the red, so it's not going to get hot, well, it, will, it will get warm, but it's not going to burn. Obviously, get our flax through in there with a good heat. We're going to make a nice uniform toe bend. Remember this is flat still, it's a lot harder to move. A nice uniform, good heat. This time we're going to hit behind where our now dots are because it's the front it's a bolder toe bend this part there will start to link itself up make sure you work the inside edge down that will give us the width back and stop from riding up and again On. Make sure when we do it, okay, we are hitting where the air is. We're not squashing it against the anvil, we're hitting where the air is there. Okay, 
line it up on the edge of the anvil through your dot. Is it symmetrical? No, it's a bit straight there. You just need to send that on. Tap a little light tap, then hit the air. Make sure you work that inside board down to where it's distorted. There we have nice flowing toe bend. Okay, so top them over again. Concave shoe in the fire. Okay, that's not going to take too long at all to get hot. So we're going to force your heel. Remember, the more proficient we get at this, we should be able to force your heel to turn the branch in one hit. But obviously, there's no point rushing and doing that and poorly forging the hill. You're best off using that hill, uh, heat to force the hill correctly. I'm going to film through there this part. Get down closer. Again, remember it's important that we push, we come at an angle, we push the um, corners in. Keeping his hand straight like because we don't want to bend the branch. We're pushing. Pushing the hill back into itself. Outside hit the outside hill for John. Just to make sure, but if we've altered the angle of the branch, we straighten it back up. Make sure our toe bend is where we left it. So that branch is now straight. Okay? So obviously now we need to do our outside hill on a flat shoe, which is pretty much same process obviously you can get a nice hammer finish on a flat shoe and again we'll go for rasping up uh, on a different lesson but it's important that we can hammer dress the heels the best we can it saves time rasping okay so again same again Push the corners in. So I don't want long, slopey hill checks. to be forged into the center we don't want to see this slope going all the way to the outside it doesn't fit on horse's feet Uh, concave shoe, put it back around there, fine. Okay, remember, it's your left hand, it's your tongue hand which turns this shoe. If we try and turn the toe quarter too much, we'll end up with a straight heel. Remember, the horse's foot, although the shoe wants to be a little bit straighter than the horse's foot, if we're going to give it width and length, it's got to flow still. 
So a lot of people from the quarters back are too straight. Doesn't fit the foot. Okay, make sure we've got a good even heat all the way from the toe to the heel. And then we put the beak where we want our quarter. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to, and especially if you watch this part of the shoe there, I'm gonna hit the heel and drop my hand. Bend the heel. That part has turned itself. Okay, and I've got a nice flowing heel radius. Line the shoe up on the edge of the anvil. And again, other than just giving it a slight tap. Okay. Pretty much in the right place. We've got enough heat there, let's stick on that, uh, our nail holes in. So, equal amount, shoe square on the anvil. We've got an equal amount either side of the anvil. Halfway through the hole, outside heel now. Okay, then put one in the middle. Don't need to bunch in here, we've got plenty of space. Okay, remember your pitch. Remember if your nail holes don't come out in one. Okay. And again, just go around the beak of the anvil. Push any lumps and bumps in. But even if there's no lumps and bumps, this is good for putting the flow into the shoe and getting out any straight lines. Okay, and lastly, you toe the way to the heel flat. Just box it off slightly with your hammer. Okay, and then get your second pritchel, just go through your nail. Some people like to re-stamp, I very rarely do on concave. Okay, so there's our outside branch. That's half the shoe done. Obviously, moving back to our flat shoe. We've got to turn the branch now. So I don't worry about that, Byron. Okay, we've got to turn the branch now. Remember the shape's different on the front shoe, more flowing, more uniform. So again, put my quarter over, and I'm going to hit the heel and drop my hand. So in about four or five hits there, I've pretty much got my front shoe shape. Line the dots up on the side of the anvil for the toenails. Okay, so if anything, I just need to put a bit more flow into that. And go level, especially on the back side of the stick. Again, still got plenty of heat here, so rather than faff around, let's get my um, nail holes marked. Okay, again, equal amounts over the anvil, halfway across the square hole, okay, then one in the middle. Now remember, important we come off the center line so that allows us to put pitch on okay obviously we need to get a little bit warmer and what i'll do at this point so we don't run ahead of, ahead of itself i don't need to get it much warmer to get the nail holes in so i'm just going to dump that straight back in the fire that's right it's voice moment um, and I dump that straight back in the fire, get up to temperature, so we're going to stamp that up. Now, you may have noticed, when I did stamp that, I've got quite a narrow stamp, different stamp, obviously for the plain stamp. This is the starter stamp, that is the finisher stamp. The reason we do this, some people just use one stamp, but the reason we do this is the starter stamp, nice and hard, quite narrow, cuts through the steel without displacing too much material. It saves time. And I've found since doing this, I get a lot better um, consistent nail holes. Unless we're wear and tear on the tools. 
Okay, go through. Again, through the pitch, you'll add prick. Make sure you aim for the centre of the back side of the material. Go flat. And then, if you have got any frog eyes, or just to put the flow in the shoe, just nice and gently, moving your hand at all times, you go around, straight up and down, and then knock the corners off slightly with your hammer, especially on this back edge there. That makes your inside border flow. And go flat again, all the way from the toe. Box them off in the last now with your hammer a little bit. Remember, hammer it at the angle you're boxing off. Don't just hit it. Okay? And then what I do, lastly, the finisher only wants one hit. And then I'll just go through with me finish the ritual. So, lime and nail holes up near to the anvil is the hill in the centre. So, that in the centre, you know, if I imagine that now into there, I've got the finished shoe. So, I can visualise it. Okay, so inside branch and the concave shoe now. the inside border a little bit because it's the inside and again outside into the centre put the stone check in again come on here bar this has got to work the outside sorry the um, outside border over a little bit to the hill Again, remember this is 3.8, so you're not going to get a massive fold over like you would do in a traditional hunter section. But there is a difference between the inside and the outside, and it's clearly visible. Okay, so lastly, before that goes back in the fire, let's just make sure that the toe's still lined up. Okay, so if we bend that now, again we have our completed shoe. inside or medial heel on the flat sheet. So we've got watching, we've got Gareth, we've got Charlie. Charlie could have come out working with me last week, I drove past where you live. Um, and John's watching as well. Hope you're all keeping safe. Again, remember, if you've got any questions, just type it below. You can just say hello if you want. Okay, so inside branch, just gonna thin the last inch and a half, two inches up. Don't need to overdo it. Just to show that there is a definite difference between your inside and your outside. And make sure you pull it back down to three eighths. Okay, so you better start working the outside border into the second uh, centre, sorry, and then put the stone check in as well while you start to.
again before it goes back in the fire, just line my toenails up on the front of the anvil, checking, making sure the finished shoe is all going to be in the right place because the toe bend's still in the right. Remember that toe bend's like the foundation of the house. But at any time making that house, if the side sets into them um, foundations, the house is going to end up wonky. So we've always got to keep go back and check the toe bend before moving on. Okay, so back on the concave, we're going to turn that inside branch now. Is that the same for good uniform heat from toe to heel? Obviously remember to keep it all nice and clean. Put the shoe on the bit where we want our court to be, hit the heel, drop this hand. Simple as that. Okay, remember, tongue hand makes the shoe. Line the toe up, have a look. We're a little bit out, just need to send that on. Line it up there. That's in line with there. That just wants a flick on on that outside. But we can go back and do that. It's fine. I think that's just closed up a little bit. When we've got an arrow. So again, there's the stamp. Okay, work out. Obviously we need to come forward from the outside heel now. Only a little bit though. Again, we've got plenty of heat, it's only concave. Make sure you put your pitch on it. And let's just quickly blast them out. Then level. Again. Got our lumps and bumps in. There you go, flat from toe all the way down to the hill. Okay, I've just closed up there a little bit. On the outside toe. Quarter. We're just going to cut the taps. There you go. So now, then, for example, if we look down through our heels, you'll see that we have alignment. Okay, remember it wants to be slightly a little bit longer on the outside. Okay, but. As a nice uniform shape goes to go on a foot, or certainly on the shelf to go on the stock, you know, it's not too bad because you know these have got to be fitted to the foot. Okay, so we want a nice uniform shape, something we can fit easily. Okay, so that will suffice. Okay, so that's our hind shoe. So we've got to finish this front shoe now. Obviously with the hind shoe, what we're going to do next week, we're going to do a session on, um, we're going to do a session on clipping, different ways of clipping shoes, and we'll break down the process. Secondly, we'll go through rasping. Because we're moving on now from that first block we did. You know, we can look into rasping, how to, um, Utilize your rasping skills, okay? Because you see some people and they waste a lot of time rasping, not actually achieving that. You know, at the end of the day, rasping is just there to tidy up what we've done with the hammer. Okay, that's why we forge heels. It's a lot more effective. Okay, so again, find our quarter over to the anvil. I hit the hill. I'm going to drop this hand. Check it, a little bit more. Go flat, work your inside border down again.
Okay, and let's get our start stamp. Let's start putting our nailos. Again, line the toenails up. Find your, ins uh, your outside now. Come forward a little bit. Okay. Okay. Obviously, want a little bit more heat to actually go through that. So, that's a bit of that damage on our tools. So, we go flat, flat and level. Okay, get back in the fire. Oh, watch out, Matt Burrows is now watching. Surprised he's not watching Emdale Farm. Maybe that's not started yet. Okay, you don't need it too hot for this phase. So, start to stand back in there. Into your centre still on the back side. Pritchell. Pitch. Make sure you don't twist your hand when you're doing this neither. So we have nice clean flowing arrows. Then flat. Around the back of the anvil. And again, if we're doing this size shoe, do it here on the handle. If we go too big, we're going to open the shoe up. If we do it too small, we're going to end up squashing it, end up with more lumps and bumps. So find the right sweet spot of the bit, this flat side, very lightly, all the way around to the heel. Then knock your corners off at diagonal. Same with that side. Keep that hand moving. Lastly, just not as much on the other side, but just slightly box off where you're going to rasp it. Okay, and again lastly, finish your stamp. Doesn't take a lot, just a quick slap. toenails up and have a look. Stay there, bud. Okay, remember it is a flat shoe from the heel now to heel now. We just need to take that sharp inside border off with the round side of our hammer. Seating out. Okay, round side of the hammer in there. All the right. way. It's the perfect temperature to do this. You don't need it too hot. It's just taking that sharp edge off. Okay. And again, I'll flip it around that side. Line my toenails up there. But actually. And then if we just, again, drop our stamp handles in and just look down, we can see, we can see the symmetry of the shoe. Remember these stamps are different sizes. Okay, but we can see that kind of parallel line passing through the center of the hill there. If anything, I probably just want a quick crack open at the toe. That'll do. And then level. Okay. 
So there you go. I will be setting a task later on after this video is finished. Um, that task is for everyone who's got access to a forge to complete. When I post the task, it's going to be so simple, probably what we've done here, okay? I'm not really too bothered about sizes, but I just want to see where you've progressed over the last six months or whether you've gone backwards or is there a single part of the process which you're missing out and getting wrong? Because we can fix that, and that's important. But we develop it, we fix the little problems there, we, we get out of that habit and we move forward. You know, um, obviously some of you won't have access to a forge. That's not a problem, but when I put a task, I need you to say in the comments below, I have no access to the forge, so I can't do this. This is fine. We can have a tutorial based on that and where you're at anyway. We'll catch up. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've gained something out of this. If anyone's got any questions, even if you don't want to post it up on the um, thing because you're embarrassed, feel free to send me a private message. Okay, peace out.